Hey everyone, it's John with Roadkill Incorporated, and I just did another pickup. Uh, two pallets, lots of interesting stuff. The highlights are probably that lime clamshell there, and then also this Panasonic Toughbook tablet. Never seen one of these. Uh, but lots of other crazy tablets here, lots of phones, lots of uh, different things, old iPhones. So yeah, anyway, I'll get it back. This is the first pickup I'm doing that I will be dropping off at my new place. So that'll be uh, something different and I'll talk to you later. All right, well, I made it back. Uh, here we are in the new garage. Super exciting, isn't it? Um, actually, yeah, it has an eight foot garage door, which I've discovered you have to have if you want to put your van in uh, a garage. Uh, very important. Standard garages have a seven foot garage door. So uh, excited to be able to put the van in the garage. Uh, the stuff is looking pretty good. Uh, things shifted a little bit. The tough book fell over, but it is a tough book. So I would expect it to be fine. Um, let's see, the toilet paper fell off to the side. That's okay though. Uh, so yeah, I'll get all this unpacked and we'll see what we have. Okay, so I brought all this stuff in. I was going to do the video in the garage, but I realized the garage floor is covered in mud. It's a really nice floor. It's uh, an epoxy floor, but uh, yeah, there's just a lot of mud on it. So I thought I'd just bring this stuff in and uh, hopefully I can do this in one take because I really don't have any time. Um, but yeah, really interesting lot. Um, I'm not going to show you the Max because I just don't have time to sort them out and do that. And you've seen them a hundred times before. It's pretty much the, the normal assortment of Max. Um, so the biggest thing is just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phones. Um, just incredible. They're Samsung, I guess, S4. I, I don't know Android or Samsung or anything at all, really. Uh, but they've all got the batteries removed, all got the back case removed. Um, strangely, a lot of the screens seem to be new. I mean, they've got um, a sticker, uh, the cellophane on the front of the screen. So I don't exactly know what that means, why they would have a new screen, but then be scrapped. So that's strange. Um, so yeah, lots and lots and lots of phones. I'm getting into new territory all the time, it seems. Uh, then we have the key lime um, clamshell. Happy to see one of those. Of course, it doesn't have the Apple symbol because none of them do. Uh, but at least there is a clamshell. Uh, that is a Surface Pro, I'm told. Again, I do not know anything but the Apple stuff. So uh, that is a Surface Pro. Uh, supposedly worth a little bit of money if the keyboard works. Uh, then this is, what is this? This is a Cisco, some sort of point of sale device, I would guess. Um, this is interesting. This is a Compaq tablet. Uh, you may remember that Compaq got bought by HP a million years ago, uh, which means that this is like a 20-year-old tablet. It was one of the first uh, commercial tablets. This was actually, I remember rolling this out to salespeople in uh, companies I worked in. They're really terrible. Um, they're designed kind of badly. They're not intuitive. And the software, they literally used Windows. I mean, you go start programs, applications, you know, with a pointer. Uh, I don't know if the pointer is, if it comes, if it has it. Nope, there's a hole. Uh, that's where the, the pointer would go. But uh, yeah, and then you'd load these tablet drivers on top that give you a really crappy interface. Um, so yeah, this is sort of the first iteration of the tablet and then it didn't work out that well. Um, and then people kind of forgot about it for a while, except like in restaurants, you know, you go to restaurants and they use, uh, touch screens and restaurants that worked out really well for them. But aside from, uh, specific uses, tablets kind of died away. And then of course, you know, the iPad came and that changed everything, but this is kind of a piece of history. Um, sort of a mostly failed tablet that Compaq released before uh, they got bought up. And this is strange. I thought I had something uh, interesting here, but it turns out it's just 
the antenna for a wireless card. I've of course seen these PCMTA wireless cards, but I'd never seen this thing sticking out. And I guess it just has, uh, it would normally have a plastic casing over this thing, but uh, the casing is gone, which makes it look kind of bizarre. Oh, my shirt is caught. All right. Okay. So now we have touch pad or tough, tough pad tablets. Um, Panasonic Toughbooks are um, really interesting laptops. They're used by military and police. Like if you look in a, a police car, the laptop is probably a Toughbook. Uh, they're just ruggedized uh, like crazy. Um, they're pretty expensive too, I think. It's kind of a niche market. I've known people who have made a living specializing in Toughbooks um, just because, uh, yeah, there's there's always a market for them. Um, so kind of an interesting product. I've not, I'm not aware of, uh, whether or not the tablet side of the, the tough, uh, the tough world, the tough pad world is uh, viable as a refurbishing option. But, uh, yeah, so these are the first I've seen of these, the FZ G1. And then we have these guys, which are just crazy. I don't know how the heck these guys work. But they're obviously mounted to something. And then every port has like a yeah, a compartment that you go in. I guess that's power. So, I mean, you can basically throw these off a cliff. Wow. I don't know what goes in there. That's pretty deep. Maybe that's some sort of uh, hard drive. But, uh, yeah, interesting. And... Uh, Yet more phones, yet more phones. Um, tablets, a friend of mine told me this gold Samsung is sort of the special edition, Verizon only. Um, so interesting. These tablets are in better shape than a lot of the tablets I've been getting lately, which is good. Um, it's frustrating to get hundreds of tablets like these and they all have just very faint cracked screens. And these are, old iPhones. Um, I want to say fours. They're probably fives though. I don't know. It's been so long. I just don't know. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen too many of those lately. So that's interesting. Lots more tablets. This is interesting. It reminds me of the uh, Apple trackpad. Um, you know, the wireless trackpad. It's got this thing with the batteries under it. So this is a Lenovo I don't know if it's the same concept or if this is a whole computer, if this is an accessory or if it's a whole device. I really don't have any idea. I feel like a moron doing these videos because it's like, I have no idea. Uh, this is really pretty. Um, iPods. I, I just get a kick out of how, how thin they are, how small they are. Very nice little iPods. And they're all engraved on the back, which is frustrating. Uh, some more Panasonics. This is strange. Medica. Um, could Medica mean it's a medical device? Uh, I wonder. It's like a tablet, but it's, uh, it's very thick. Kind of, kind of like the tough books or something. Um, yeah, I could see this like in an operating room or something that's mounted. Uh, pretty crazy. Some more Microsoft. Again, I don't know what this is really, but there you go. Oh, it's a 1514 Windows 8 Pro, which I assume is, well, Windows 8 is pretty old. So yeah, and then we just have more and more and more tablets, just various tablets. It's interesting because I'm used to the iPads, where the iPads are over there. But I guess what this junk is that I'm getting is essentially the, you know, iPad one, two, three, four, five of the uh, the PC world. Um, so definitely a learning experience. Lots of crazy stuff. Some of them are in bags, which you know I don't really know why. Very good shape. Probably all locked, 
but anyway, anyway. So there we go. Um, yeah, interesting lot. Kind of disorienting to be in a different place, but that's not a bad thing. And uh, I will talk to you later. Hello, well, I'm back doing yet another pickup, and uh, it's a very nice day today, which is a relief. You can see the blue sky there, and uh, it's an interesting one. We got, first off, three of the Apple X-Serve G5, as you can see there. Uh, these are interesting machines. This is uh, Apple's 1U rack mount server. Uh, I have one drive caddy, but no drive, uh, which is a problem because uh, I don't know where I would get those. Not that the X-Serve itself is not a, a problem anyway. I mean, they're huge, they're super noisy, they're not that powerful, uh, pretty much impossible to ship, all of that kind of issue. So it's unfortunate, but whatever. I've never gotten any of these before, so it'll be fun to uh, post pictures on Twitter, if nothing else. Um, so what else? We have a Samsung in a box, that's unusual, um, with a cracked screen. Uh, we have a big uh, box of every iPad and iPhone imaginable. Looking forward to um, going through that. And we've got some vintage Apple over there. I see an Apple IIc. Let's go around and look at that. Yeah, so it looks pretty uh, pretty good overall. Uh, I think this is supposed to be a button that's missing, but otherwise it looks pretty intact. We've got some other vintage Apple, the Performa 6300, Power Mac 6166. I think this is the first Power Mac. Missing a little uh, piece of plastic there. Power Mac 7290. Uh, what else do we have? I think we have we have some clamshells over there too. That's that's always a good thing. So anyway, I'll take these back and we'll get a better look at that point. All right, so I brought everything in and here it all is. Um, I'm only going to show you the interesting stuff. Um, I've got a lot of Macs that came in the lot, but you know, if you've watched my videos, you've seen those before. I really don't have time to go over the the same old stuff with those um but as you can see we have a lot of ipods and iphones um most of them fairly unremarkable older models a few ipads too um but then you know there are some newer ones some more interesting ones and then over here we have the scroll wheel models uh, always happy to see those because those are getting really popular um but yeah, you almost hope that you get the older ones, uh, the funny thing is, um, because uh, those are the ones that aren't lockable, whereas the newer models, chances are they're all locked because they take OSs that, uh, that can lock. So uh, it's funny how it works. Sometimes you want the older one uh, because there's less chance that it's uh, not going to be recoverable. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll have to start learning about these guys all over again. It's pretty funny, back in the day, 10, 12 years ago, I knew everything there was to know about all these uh, iPhones and iPods. Um, but uh, of course, I've lost all that information and I'll have to uh, figure it out once again. And um, again, it's funny, I, I just feel like I'm on these videos admitting that I know nothing about anything. Um, but you know, on that topic, uh, it's really, it's been funny on social media. Like if I ask a question or admit that I don't know something, 20 people come out of the woodwork and, uh, and help me with that. You know, some kid on the other side of the planet says, no, you're, you're doing that wrong. Do it, do it this way. And, uh, suddenly my productivity goes up because I've, I've learned something. So it's, it's really not a bad thing to be open and, uh, admit what you don't know and, and just put yourself out there. It, I, I've gone from being sort of embarrassed about it to actually using social media as, as a tool that way to sort of, you know, pull the world and see what the world has to say about uh, any given thing I'm doing. And, you know, in, in, in with this old stuff, a lot of us are really working in isolation. Um, it's perfectly possible for a very smart person to just have a lot of 
gaps in their knowledge because you can't possibly know everything. You can't possibly deal with tons of technical information without making some assumptions and some of those assumptions will be wrong. So if you put yourself out there, if you say, hey world, this is what I'm doing, I think I'm doing it right, but let me know what you think, then you know the world will come back and it'll fill in some gaps and then you'll be better for it. So anyway, end of speech. Um, so here's the PowerPC pile. Unfortunately, it doesn't look that great. A um, lot of dirt in these machines. Uh, the plastic, unfortunately, just breaks up with age. And uh, yeah, they're kind of coming apart on the other side, on the back end. Uh, not the greatest examples. I mean, I'm happy to have them. I'll probably get them to some people who will uh, refurbish them. And then we have the gray and black power books. Um, always glad to get some of those in. Uh, not particularly great condition. This one here, especially not great. I, I don't know. I don't know how that happens, but that's pretty common these days to see things that I just don't understand. <laughs> so there you go with that. Uh, three clamshells looking pretty good. Mac Mini. I think that's a 2011. Still had the optical drive. Why is it off center like that? Oh, wow. It's got a. It's got a thing. Um, yeah, Kensington lock. That definitely uh, sort of takes away from the uh, the beauty of the, <laughs> the design. Um, so then we have some tablets, PC tablets, various sorts. And then we have the 2C. Uh, this is a cool little computer. Um, it uh, comes apart, there are these little clips you have to feel around and find the clip, and then it comes off. Um, kind of reminiscent of the um, Macintosh portables. Uh, they, they come apart like that. They have these little clips, and uh, you have to be careful, or, or you break the clips, and then it's never the same again. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so whoa, can't seem to handle zoom here. Um, yeah, so there's that. It's, it's in pretty good shape. There's the board. Very small computer for its time. And uh, the funny thing is, the majority of the inside is taken up by this five and a quarter inch uh, floppy drive. I mean, a full 40, 45% of the, the space is just this drive. So um, I don't have the means of powering this on. It uses a uh, round, uh, like Commodore 64 style DIN connector. Um, so I'll have to get uh, something compatible with that to try it. It did have all of the, the case screws removed, which um, is kind of a red flag. Uh, it's like someone's been in there to see what they could do and then failed and so now I've got it. But but hey, I can't complain. Um, it's, a, it's a neat old computer and I've been uh, uh, hoping that one of these would come along for a little while. So that's basically it for now. Um, what else can I say? Oh, this guy. Um, yeah, this is an RCA ebook. Ebook I. I don't know what that. I don't know how to read that little graphic thing. Um, but yeah, gee, why didn't this take off? I mean, look at that. It's got a nice fat handle there. Uh, it's got. I think it has a pen. Yeah, it has a pen. Comes out and you can draw on it or whatever. And uh, there's something else interesting about this guy. What was it? Oh yeah, it has a phone jack. I really need to not do these videos one-handed. Okay, so I finally got that open. I used the uh, pen here to pry open this little compartment. Maybe that's what it's for. Maybe it's not actually for the screen. It's just to get access to the ports. And you have a phone jack here. So I don't know what exactly you would need a phone jack on a e-reader type device for. Um, yeah, 
but 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 how innovative it's got a phone jack i mean I, nothing else that i've seen of this type has has a phone jack so i don't i don't know how this didn't take off with a big fat thing to hold on to and a pen and a phone jack but anyway i guess i guess things that you think would take off just just don't so too bad for rca anyway uh thanks for watching and i'll see you next time